Okay, 2011, number two. Um, this also has differential equations, but not until part E. So we've got a ride. Uh, we've got no friction until you get to point D, right? And so it's just going to like slide down here, no friction. So that means energy considerations probably I can use um, to do that. And um, all the distances, that's the angle theta, and so on and so on. OK, so on the dot below represents the passenger compartment. Draw and label the forces, but not the components that act on the passenger car. Well, there's gravity, of course. Uh, and there's a normal force. And um, that's it. There's no friction. There's nothing else. So this will act as the, um, or part of this, this and this component here. There will be a centripetal force, but um, that's not a force um, on, by itself, right? That's just a net force. So that's it. Now part B, they want, in terms of theta and the magnitudes of the forces drawn in part A, Determine an expression for the magnitude of the centripetal force acting on the compartment at point C. If you need to draw anything besides, don't draw on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw it again then. So I've got, here's the car. I've got this normal force here. That's the angle theta there. Here's gravity. So if I broke up gravity, into these two components. That remember the track is kind of like this at this point. That would be like the tangent line to the track. This is the force here that's accelerating it down the track, giving it its like a tangential acceleration. And this is balancing out this. So this is the normal force. And since this is the angle theta here, right, that's the small angle of that triangle. You do some simple geometry to figure out that it's this, not that one. This would be um, opposite that. So this is the sine component. This is Fg sine theta, or Mg sine theta, if you want. Um, and I think all they want here, if I'm not mistaken, they want us to determine an expression for the magnitude of the centripetal force acting on the compartment um, in terms of theta and the magnitudes of the forces drawn in part A. So we, they want to, don't want us to do anything more than have this. The centripetal force is equal to, it would be this minus that, right? That's the net force toward the center. That's what centripetal force is. So it would be normal force minus gravitational force times the sine of theta. And I think it would be fine to have normal force minus mg sine theta. Right? Could you substitute for the normal force? Could, what can you substitute there? You can't, because you don't know what that normal force is. Right? Those are not balancing out. There is a centripetal force. All right, part C. Um, derive an expression for the speed of the passenger car as, as it reaches the point D. Um, so that's from here to here. And that looks like it's dropping 3R over 4 and then another R. So I'm going to use energy considerations here because there's no friction. There's no energy leaking out of the system. So that means all this potential energy will turn into kinetic energy here. So I'm going to write that. Um, I'm going to write that potential energy is going to be equal to kinetic energy. My potential energy at the top equals kinetic energy at the bottom. So potential energy at the top would be M, capital M, because that's what they're using, G times 7R over 4. That's the 3 fourths of an R plus another R. That's going to be equal to 1 half M times the velocity at the bottom squared. The M's cancel out, and we get the velocity at the bottom is the square root of 7rg over 2. 
I think. Right, you can check my math there, but I think that's right. And multiply both sides by 2. The m's cancel out. And 70. Yep, that's right. All right, um, D. Oh, they called that VD velocity at, the, at point D. Um, part D, a force acts on the compartment between points D and E and brings it to rest at point E. If the compartment is brought to rest by friction, calculate the numerical value of the coefficient of friction between the compartment and the track. Well, if it's coming to rest, you know, work is equal to change in kinetic energy. So the work done by friction is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This would be the point of, by the way, if you didn't get this problem, you didn't get this part, you shouldn't keep watching right now. If when I write this down, you should say, oh, I should have used that relationship. And you should pause this video and see if you can get it from here. Okay? You need to like actively engage these uh, solution videos. So um, go ahead and do that if you haven't. Now, uh, work done by friction, that's force times distance. So let's see. The the work done by friction will be negative work. That's the frictional force times the distance, which is 3r, right, according to the picture. From d to e, that's a distance of 3r. And that's equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, the final kinetic energy is 0, and the initial kinetic energy is 1 half m times the velocity at d squared. So let's substitute some stuff here. The um, Frictional force would be mu times the normal force times 3r. That's what we're trying to solve for. Again, if you, I wrote something here that you didn't have, you should pause and try to finish it from here. And then that's equal to negative 1 half m. And then that's the velocity at d is this. So when you square that, that's going to be 7rg over 2. All right, so let's see if we can clean that up. The minus signs cancel out, the m's cancel, the g's cancel, so I've got three, oh, and the r's cancel too, so I've just got a three over here, and then I've got a seven over four on that side. All the letters cancel out, which is good. They want us to just get a number for this. Divide by three, so mu is seven twelfths. All right, last part. Maybe I'll do that on here, since I've got some room down here and there's a graph. Um, now consider the case where there's no friction between the compartment and the track, but instead the compartment's brought to rest by a breaking force, negative kV. So that's like air resistance, right? It's, it's a constant times the velocity, where k is a constant and v is the velocity of the compartment. Express all algebraic answers, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can say in terms of V, so you don't have to use your expression, you can use that. Um, so write, but do not solve a different, uh, the differential equation for V of T. So that should start from a net force. What's the breaking force? Negative K V is equal to um, it's dv dt. Oops, uh, wait a second. No, 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 scratch that, sorry. The net force, or it may be, hold on, let me think about that for a second. Is that correct? Yes, I think that was correct. Because the net force, the only force acting on this is the breaking force, right? Sorry, I was second guessing myself because that we didn't have gravity in there, but there is no gravity in here. So it is, in fact, negative kV. That is the net force, the breaking force, is equal to m times dV dt. That's correct. All right, solve the differential equation you wrote in part one. All right, so solving this separation of variables, I would get 1 over v dv is equal to negative m, oh, hold on, I moved that over here, Next, sorry, negative k over m, I should write capital M here, 
because this is their mass, right? Sorry about that. Negative k over m dt. That's natural log v is equal to negative k over m t plus c. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to use the fact that at time zero velocity is equal to that velocity at point D right? and plugging that in that's going to make this the C is going to be equal to that so velocity is equal to the velocity at D alright There you go. There's the solution. It was a simpler situation because we didn't have two forces fighting against each other here. We didn't have gravity. This was like laid out horizontally. That's why this turned out to be simpler than the air resistance problem. Um, all right, on the axis below, sketch a graph of the magnitude of the acceleration of the compartment as a function of time. On the axis, explicitly label any intercepts, asymptotes, maximums, minimums, or with numerical values or algebraic expressions as appropriate. All right, so um, what's the magnitude of the acceleration at the very beginning? It would be the braking force is kV, right? So at the very beginning, the braking, if that's the braking force, the force of braking is negative kV, then the acceleration of braking would be negative kV over m, right? Would it not? Because um, I'm just dividing force equals mass times acceleration, so divide the mass. So that's my initial acceleration. And um, they wanted magnitude here, so all positive values. So I'm going to mark that as kV over m, right? And the initial velocity is that v sub d. All right. And then um, I think we know what this graph is supposed to look like, like, right? That's the acceleration. But as it slows down, there's going to be less and less of a breaking force, which may, is going to make the acceleration get smaller and smaller and asymptotically approach 0. And since they specifically asked for us to label these things, I'm going to say this is a horizontal asymptote. And that's it. So I'd like to just point out to you that even if you struggled with some of these other parts, if you can do differential equations pretty well, you could do part E really kind of like standing alone from the other parts. And they made it that way. They made you, um, they made it so that you can just use, oh, the velocity at d is just v sub d. You didn't have to use any values from previous parts of the problem to be able to get that. All right. Um, have a nice day.